Greetings ladies and gentlefish and we're having some more subscriber replay fun uh, and in this video it's going to be a rather American affair kicking off with Silent Tool in the often overlooked if we're going to be honest tier 7 American medium tank the T20 um, I say this thing is often overlooked and it kinda is I mean you've got the Sherman's that are historical machines at tiers 5 and 6 and a lot of people play the game for them you have the Pershing and then the patterns at tiers 8 to 10 people have a habit of just kind of ignoring the T20 and I must confess when I played it and this is going back quite a long time now I think it was if you go back to some of the earliest videos I posted on YouTube I think there are some T20 videos among them but um, when I s first played this machine, I was not a big fan, I must confess. Um, so what do you get? You get 10 degrees of gun depression, reasonable mobility, pretty terrible armor, and a 90mm gun, which for a long time was the hardest hitting gun to be found on a tier 7 medium tank. It's basically the same gun you find on the Hellcat. 160 penetration, that steward just went away. Uh, yeah, 160 pen, 240 alpha damage, which are both fairly tasty for a tier 7 medium tank. The problems are the aiming stats and the accuracy, while not terrible, are decidedly mediocre. And the reload time on this gun, it's fair to say, is pretty sucky. Now, with time, actually, um, other machines have uh, tier 7 medium tanks now have alpha damage that surpasses the T20. So we've got things like the A44 with its 300 alpha. Um, you've got the T34-100 uh, with 250. Um, you've got the... I say it's got no armor and then it bounces something. Anyway, you've got the... What else have you got? Oh, the Leo, the Swedish machine with, well, potentially 300 if you choose the big fat gun. So there are options out there. Um, however, I don't think this is a bad machine. Now, personally, I preferred the Comet, but like I said, I don't actually think this is a bad tank. Um, it looked like a shot went into that SU-152, which is good, but it looks like it almost hit Silent Tool here, which is slightly less good. Anyway, scoreline for this match, 4-4, and uh, I should point out, Silent Tool here is top tier, which obviously helps. And they're just trying to break through past these guys, and Silent Tool is flanking them, and he quite sensibly decides to kill that KV-85. One, because he has the kill shot on the guy, and one fewer guns is a good thing, but also because he can get behind the SU-152, at which point it poses absolutely no threat to Silent Tool whatsoever. Um, c'est la vie. But that's two quick kills for Silent Tool. Uh, we're here on Erlenberg, of course. Um, and they have cleared out this eastern flank, the 8 and 9 lines. So, just seeing if he can, if he can find anyone else to kill, though likely not. Um, instead, it looks like the team are continuing to push around. Now, Erlenberg is a funny little map. Uh, you've got these two halves separated by a river down the middle. And one of the general rules of thumb on Erlenberg, I'm not going to say this is true every single time, but a general rule of thumb is don't cross the rivers unless you absolutely have to, or cross the river unless you absolutely have to. Um, because often you find that if you cross the river you get ambushed, outnumbered and murderized. This is really obvious when you play the assault match. If you're playing on the defending team, um, every, pretty much every tank that's going to the uh, one and two lines is dead. Adds, they're just dead. They may not know it yet, but they are dead. And you, as a team, then have to kind of, well, compensate for that, essentially. So, we've got a T25-2 and a Cromwell Berlin here, along with um, face facing off against Silent Tools T20 and a friendly Panther M10. They've managed to isolate the Cromwell Berlin, which means the pair of them can kill him without too many problems. There's the T25. Silent Tool was still reloading. There's the pretty shoddy reload on this gun. And interesting, actually, when you compare the T20 to the T25-2. 
The T25 has... Wow, that was a lucky bounce for him. The T25 has what is essentially the same gun, or it's a very, very, very similar gun. It's not quite the same, but it's very similar. Um, and it gets a better reload and better accuracy and all that jazz. But of course, the T20 is overall a slightly better chassis. Um, you actually have... Uh, I think you have slightly better overall mobility, and of course you have a turret that doesn't take three years to rotate, which is a plus. Now, this of course is another reason why crossing the river can be a decidedly dicey proposition, because, well, the friendly base here is being capped, which is a little bit awkward. As Silent Tool is on the other side of the map, and he's going to struggle to do much about it. He does, however, pick up the kill on the GW Panther, which is nice. So, the enemy team are up to 60%. They've got at least two people in the capture circle right about now. And, oh, several people are coming over. It looked like there was a little reset on the base there, which is unusual. IS, no, do not want. Silent Tool just goes for the Capola shot on the IS, manages to get it. And this guy should now be screwed. And when he reloads, there we go, there's kill number five. Panther M10 does go down. Someone managed to be a hero and get a reset on the base. And Silent Tool is going after this FV304. Now he is risking a shot from the IS here. <coughs> and the FV fires as well, but the FV misses. Silent Tool manages to just nudge the FV. The FV is such a tiny, lightweight machine that he kills the guy, and that just leaves the IS and the T29 remaining on the enemy team. But, don't count them out yet, they may not have a huge amount of health, but with the exception of Silent Tool, neither do the friendly team, and they're both top tier tanks with some armour to bounce stuff, so don't count them out, however, that's probably sealed their fate. Silent Tool takes out the T29 for kill number 7, he has been racking them up, and that just leaves the enemy IS. And just trying to find this guy. He's no longer in the capture circle. He's decided, screw that. It's not going to work. He's moved out of it. And, well, hopefully the friendly team can find this fellow. Uh, there he is. Can Silent Tool get a shot on him? It'd be really nice if he could. Someone was able to. This is for kill number eight and a Radley Walters medal. Can he do it? Come on. IS kills the T-37, for which I am silently grateful. And there we go. Kill number eight. Finish the match off in style. Nicely done. So let's go and have a look at the post-battle stats for this one. And here we go then. That was enough for Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Fighter, Fire for Effect, High Caliber Top Gun, and of course that Radley Walters medal for picking up eight kills. More than half of the enemy team. 2,956 damage done, 8 kills, 1,399 base experience. Shoutout should go to the friendly T37, 2,600 damage, 2 kills, and over 1,300 base experience from him is a very nice result there as well. Looking at the detailed results, Silent Tool fired 17 shots, 16 hits, 15 pens, nice. Um, in my experience, this gun is not always that reliable. I found it very frustrating, but nicely done for Silent Tool here. Almost 3,000 damage done, most of which was from fairly close range. Two hits received, one penned, one didn't. Three enemy vehicles spotted, ten damaged, eight destroyed, 760-odd assistance damage, and a very nice profit into the bargain as well at 26,000 credits, even with a standard account. So really nice results there from Silent Tool in his T20. Now let's push onwards to another game. Here we go then with the second reward tank for the personal missions. This is the American Tier 7 Tank Destroyer, the T28 Heavy Tank Concept. So, this game. We're here on Live Oaks. And the first thing you should know is that we're top tier. The T28 HTC doesn't like being bottom tier, and that's due to two main reasons. Firstly, let's consider what the strengths of the T28 are and what its weaknesses are. As you can see, it is not a fast machine. So relocating, mobility, flanking people, nah, not so much. The armor, however, is pretty good. Now there are weak spots, see these turrets on the side? with the stars usefully named on, labelled on them. 
they are both weak spots of the armor profile. So if you don't know how to kill one of these things, aim for those. Um, but the armor is pretty good. So strengths are armor, and now let's take a look at the gun. The gun is a 105mm gun, it's not bad. 320 alpha damage, 181mm of penetration. Now 181mm of penetration isn't great for a tier 7 tank destroyer. <coughs> it's not the worst, but it's not fantastic. However, compare that or, or take into account the fact that this thing is really slow and really in order for this to be competitive in higher tier games you would want it to be having 200 penetration plus so the and it's not a very accurate one so the relative inaccuracy or that the relatively low penetration of this gun combined with the good armor mean that this is very much a machine that likes being top tier which we are so when you're in tier 9 games don't be surprised if you don't get a particularly fantastic result. This result ended up being better than I expected, if I'm going to be honest. Hello, Mr. KV-3. First shot fired, and it even bounced. Aiming at the lower front plate of that KV, but we weren't able to penetrate. Now, I just want to show you how I'm angling this tank very quickly. The way I'm angling it, I am hoping... that I'm just going to poke my gun around the corner, and the building is going to hide my right hand little mini turret and the angle of my tank so the front superstructure is going to hide my left hand mini turret I'm trying to minimize the exposure of those two weak spots Churchill Mark 1 <coughs> second shot fired we bounce on him not off to a particularly great start and there's quite a lot of bad guys in the town here so we do have to be careful Tiger 1 we managed to put a shot into KV3 pops around the corner but shoots someone else Sorry about that, I'm not going to focus on him too much. Tiger 1, now I'm trying actually to track this guy here. Because then we can do a whole world of damage to him. That's the plan anyway. More track damage on me. I do damage and track him there. More bounce. Finally take some damage from the KV-3. By the look of it, firing high explosive. I can't really blame him too much for that to be fair, given that everyone else has failed visually to penetrate me. Front of the turret on a Churchill Mark 1, KV-3 gets in the way of the shot. And that's more HE damage from the KV-3, and that's another HE shell from the only. The only damage so far I've taken is from HE rounds. Driver being knocked out, but in this situation my driver isn't massively important, so I don't have to worry about that too much. More HE, side of the turret, there we go. <coughs> and he is dead. That leaves this VK. That Churchill is still alive somehow. Oni is popped around the corner. He can have some pain too. And who else wants some? Come on, you big fat suckers. Who else wants some? You think you're hard? And you can see with the damage driver, this thing is really, really sluggish. Now, the gun arc on this tank, bearing in mind it is a tank destroyer, no turret, the gun arc on this thing is actually pretty good. Goodbye, Oni. <laughs> Always nice to have a hammer wrap here and there. So, the Churchill finally went down, along with a bunch of his mates, and we've won the town. There's a T29 remaining, an IS, and a Black Prince. Now, I'd lost a crew member earlier on in this game, I'm not quite sure what it was, who I had previously put back in. So, this dead driver, this is permanent. Um, and as a result... I am going to ignore the T29 IS, the Black Prince, and the Tiger. Because we have lots of allies to kill them. And our base is looking decidedly open to attack. So I am heading down toward our base preemptively. Now I saw an IS on pretty low health, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I can ninja the kill. But I say ninja. See how long it is taking me for me to move this tank around. Oh, Tiger P. As long as no one blocks my shot. There we go, we get a bit of damage on the Tiger P before he dies. Skoda T40, Dicker Max, and S another Skoda T40 have all gone toward our base. And so I am trying to go back in order to defend it. And hopefully stop us from losing a game that we should really win, given how this has gone so far. But remember that dead driver? Yeah, it's kind of awkward. So we're slowly and ponderously making our way back. 
Now it doesn't look like the enemy team has started capping, which is a really good thing, because the only thing we have had in a position to do anything about it was a leopard for some time. If the two Skodas and the Dickamax had tried to cap, I think we'd have probably lost this game. And uh, probably lost it already, or be losing it right about now. But they didn't. And that is probably going to bite them on the backside, because now we have a T29, an IS, a T28 HDC, VK3601H, KV1S and a Leopard, versus their two Skodas and the Dickamax. They're a bit outnumbered, and they're outnumbered by, well, in many cases, equal or higher tier tanks. So this is not a particularly good situation to be in if you are one of those enemy tier 6s. Now we know there's at least one Skoda still over here by the base, and someone's in the capture circle. Now, I don't have um, coated optics or binos or anything on my T28. There's the reset on the Skoda T40. And there's only the one guy in the base and our leopard polishes him off. There's the other Skoda T40 who just watched on while his buddy died. And there's the Dickamax. So these guys are still over here, they just never capped. Um, in which case, why were you over here? Goodbye Mr Dickamax. I'm not really sure what they thought they were going to achieve. If they wanted to head back to defend their base, they should have done that. If they wanted to outflank us, come up behind us and try and kill us, they should have done that. What they actually did was go up to our base and then just sit there and, I don't know, wait for us to come back and then ambush us? Maybe that was their plan. No idea. Haven't got a clue. But they didn't do very well. Now, that wasn't me team killing a friendly. That was actually the Skoda killing him. It just happened to be at about the same time. And as it is, unfortunately, we cap that game and that Skoda is going to survive. I'm just not... <coughs> Sorry not fast enough to get over there. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the post-battle results. Well, as it turned out, as I said, uh, th this game was better than I actually thought it was. So we actually got Ace Tanker, uh, is that Master Gunner or something? Bruiser, Demolitionist, Fire for Effect, Shell Proof, High Calibre, Cool Headed, and Steel Wall Medals. So quite a nice haul of rewards. Actually did 3,927 damage. A lot more than I thought we did. Two kills, 1,349 base experience. Um, our T29 got five kills, over 1,000 base XP, 2,208 damage done by him. And the Scorpion, IS, both had a reasonable contribution as well. Now, usually at this point I would be saying commiserations to the enemy Skoda T40. Um, he did 2,500 damage in a tier 6, in a tier 7 game, got three kills and it wasn't quite enough. But, as far as I can work out, he may have got a good damage count, but from what I saw, his actual decision making in that game left something to be desired. So, not really sure I actually want to say that. 17 shots fired, 14 hits, 11 penetrations for that damage count, most of which was from basically point blank range. 23 hits received, of which 3 penetrated and 20 did not. I basically only got damaged by HE rounds. 3,270 damage blocked by our armour. And I think people still struggle to know where to penetrate the T28 HTC. Now, if you're in an E75 or, you know, something Tier 9, it's not that difficult. But if you're a Tier 7 or below and you don't know the weak spots on the T28, mm, that's potentially going to be a problem. Three enemy vehicles spotted, seven damaged, two destroyed, 275 assistance damage, 10 base defence points, 1.35 kilometres travelled. Um, now, the ammunition isn't cheap. It's 1,000 credits a pop, so that's 17,000 credits in ammo. And with a standard account, we'd have only made a 15,000 credit profit. I say only because it's a tier 7, and that just highlights that although these reward tanks allow you to use um, your crews from other machines in them, they are not premium tanks. They do not give you premium credits. They do not give you premium experience. I had a premium account at the time, so I got over 33,000 credits, but the point still stands. And quite a nice amount of experience into the bargain. So that was the second of the personal mission reward tanks, the T28 HTC. Let's move on. Final replay of this video then, and we're sticking with the Americans, we're sticking with Tier 7, and on this case we're sticking with Tank Destroyers. Um, and here we have the Scorpion American Tier 7 Premium Tank Destroyer, not to be confused with the Scorpion with a K, which is the German Tier 8 Premium Tank Destroyer. This is being driven for us today by Trilloch1945, and he is platooned up with another dinger 
uh, and actually another one of my subscribers, Circle of Sorrow, and he's in the SU-12244. So a pair of tier 7 tank destroyers, and this is a tier 7 match. Now the Scorpion is, I'll be honest, not really a machine I tend to see very much um, in games. I don't know if it's more popular on other servers. I own one myself, though I've not got around to playing a huge number of games in the thing yet. Um, it's uh, it's a funny machine. It was when it was introduced. It was the first premium tank destroyer, and in fact, to date, actually, it is the only premium tank destroyer for the Americans. Um, and so I was expecting it to end up being more popular than it really is. Uh, it's a tiny little machine if you have a look at it. It really is dinky. No armour whatsoever. We're talking one millimetre of armour. Uh, one millimetre of armour, which is terrible. Oh, Trilloc has been spotted. Is he going to nail this KV-1 first? Yes, he is. 90 millimetre gun. 240 alpha damage. And... 219 penetration, which is alright. It's more than the SU-122 gets in terms of PEM. Um... The reload on it is alright, but nothing particularly special. The accuracy on it is alright, but nothing particularly special. It does get quite tasty gun depression, however. Um, so you can poke over ridge lines and take shots at people, and if you do, because this thing is so dinky, um, it's quite awkward for people to get shots on you in return. So there's that, and that's quite nice. The mobility is pretty decent, actually. Um, though its traverse speed is not the best, but then it is a tank destroyer, so kind of what do you expect? Hello, Mr. KV85. How are you today? Um, the couple of games I've played in mine, I've thought it was all right, though I haven't been colossally impressed. Um, so I'll be interested to see what Trillic's opinions of this machine actually are. Um, but I know there are some people who like it, but... Uh, I know there are some people also who bought it more because it was a premium American tank destroyer than because it was actually a machine they thought would be particularly good. Hello Mr. KV-2, that was a silly decision wasn't it? Now, that KV-2, yeah I'm pretty sure that KV-2 doesn't have the reload enough to hurt Trilloc. Someone does, T-3485, and Trilloc unfortunately doesn't hit the KV-85. But in this position, as I was saying, although the Scorpion has terrible armour, the gun is positioned high up on the tank. So, and this is basically what Trilloc's doing here. In order to actually get shots off um, on the Scorpion, it's quite difficult to land them because it's so it's so dinky. And 10 degrees of gun depression. Sure, if someone manages to hit you, it's going to penetrate. But actually hitting this thing, when it's using that gun depression and going... Well, it's not really hull down, but it's a similar sort of idea. It actually makes this thing quite a nice machine in that situation. So, yeah, there is that. And that's not an option that a lot of tank destroyers get, to be fair to them. There's a T-34 off to Trilloc's left-hand side, but there's also this KV-85 who appears to have moved out. He becomes Trilloc's second kill. Although, by the way, we're not paying that much attention to him. Circle of Sorrow back there is also on two kills himself. So the dingers here are, um, are currently on four kills between them. A-44 isn't paying attention. Takes a 90mm shell for his, trouble, for his troubles. There's a T-67 over there. Nah, it doesn't look like... Um, Trillac would be able to get a shot on him. And Circle and Trillac are just murdering this A44. Poor guy. There we go. Circle picks up the kill for the platoon's fifth kill and Circle's third. Um, so yeah, praise the mighty tier 7 tank destroyers for they are prodding Mucho's buttock. There's four enemy tanks remaining at this point. T29, Tiger 1, Panther and a T150. Now we know where the panther is. We know where the tiger and the T29 were last spotted. Ooh, speak of the devils, and there, of course, is the T150. So at this point, if I were Trilloc, I'd probably be moving forward to try and actually shoot some people, because it doesn't look like these guys want to come out from cover. Having said that, although the friendly team are winning, it's not as if they're winning by a country mile. And two kills later there's only one kill in it. So this is not a foregone conclusion, especially when you consider that of the remaining tanks, the only top tier ones on the friendly team are this platoon. 
Trilloc and Circle. Nonetheless, Trilloc's had enough of all that sniping malarkey. He's going to go over and see if he can actually shoot some plebs. Hopefully he can. Trying to see if he can get up this ridge line, but it doesn't look like he's quite got the engine power for it. The Scorpion does get a pretty good engine, considering it's a fairly lightweight machine, but that's quite a steep slope, to be fair to it. So, plan B. Going around the other side, then. The Panther is a one-shot. We know that. The T-150, I can't remember how much health he had, but the T-150, well, it's a tier 6. Doesn't usually take too many shots for a tier 7 TD to kill it. Tiger's on about half health. Now, this position is not necessarily a position you'd usually want to use in your tank destroyers, but again... Scorpion. Oh, almost. Scorpion gets good gun depression, so it can. Um, Trilloc there was going for the commander's hatch on the T-29, but he didn't quite make the shot. Doesn't want to get shot by these fellas. Um, he's perfectly happy just to occupy them whilst uh, some of his friendly teammates hopefully get to shoot them. Speaking of which, that's a T-150. This could hurt. Ouch. Especially as Trilloc didn't actually penetrate. And has his gun knocked out. Which I don't think he's noticed. Otherwise I'm pretty sure he would have repaired it by now. Nonetheless, this T-150 is tracked. And Trilloc gets a little bit lucky there. Manages to make those shots work. There weren't that many of them. But manages to make them work. Even though he... Um, had a broken gun and not a huge amount to shoot at. Interestingly, Trilloc switched to premium ammunition there. I wouldn't personally have bothered. The T-150, while it's a relatively heavily armoured tier 6, it's still not going to reliably bounce the shells from the Scorpion. And with the heat ammunition, which is the premium ammunition for this tank, I believe, you always have the risk that um, your shots are just going to go into people's tracks and whatnot. And certainly for things like the sides here of a T29, uh, armour piercing would just objectively be better um, and cheaper, as you have less chance of your shot just getting eaten by the tracks, and um, you uh, don't have to pay out for the extra costs, and the penetration on the AP shells is more than sufficient. But all that said. The game ended, both of those guys got executed, the TOG took out the Tiger and the T-29 was taken down by Circle of Sorrow. So let's go and have a look at these post-battle stats. So here we go then, that was actually enough for first class mastery. When you see um, how much damage Trilloc did you might be slightly surprised by that. Bruiser, fire for effect, uh, tank sniper for doing the most damage um, at a distance of 300 meters or more and brothers in arms for the platoon getting at least three kills each and both surviving. Between them the platoon got seven kills, three for Trilloc, four for Circle. Circle did two and a half thousand damage and Trilloc managed over three thousand with 1259 base experience. So I'm pretty sure Trilloc was fairly close to the ace tanker borderline with that game um, and was perhaps a little bit unlucky not to actually get the ace tanker. Commiserations to the enemy heavy tank platoon. Um, those two heavy tanks right at the end, the T-29 and the Tiger. The T-29 managed just shy of 2,200 damage. The Tiger, 3,500, managing to pick up the high calibre medal, but not quite enough to get his team to win. 18 shots fired, 17 hits, 14 penetrations. Um, and although Trilloc picked up the tank sniper award for the most damage done over um, 300 metres, he actually did most of his damage at relatively close range. 900 assistance damage into the bargain. 78,500 credit profit there, although I would like to bear in mind two caveats with that. One, that's with a premium account, and two, it looks like whether intentionally or not, I'm willing to bet not intentionally, Trilloc ended up spending gold for his premium ammunition there. And for anyone who doesn't know, if you want premium ammunition, there's a little scroll down option next to it to change the purchasing option from gold to credits. But whenever you change anything about the tank, it has an irritating habit of defaulting back to gold, which can trick you into spending gold when you didn't want to. Um, all things considered, that was a pretty nice game there uh, for Trilloc, and indeed for the platoon. The only bits of advice I would give are... 
Assuming it wasn't a replay bug, right at the end there, although it didn't end up making too much difference, Trillic had a damaged gun, could have been important, so just bear in mind, uh, pay, out, uh, pay some attention to your module um, and which one have been wrecked or not, and also do be a little bit careful about which sort of ammunition is the right one uh, for the job. Against the T-150, I don't think the heat ammunition uh, was necessary, but the flip side is it don't think it hurt. But against the T-29 right at the end there when you had side and rear shots, I do definitely think the armour piercing would just objectively be the better uh, round of ammunition to use, ignoring cost um, for the two. Anyway, a nice game nonetheless. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that trio of games in Tier 7 American Machines. Um, and often machines you don't see all that often on the battlefield. If you did, by all means feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.